because it costs this On your ear, you're on the road, man Easy to cruel, or as a let go Take you back easy Stand up for your soul Cause we are for love We are let the people know Look at Neil from Birmingham Gentlemen, welcome to N1 and thank you for joining. Hello. Hello. No, thank you for having us. Welcome. Thank you for doing this. And I was very excited to go in to talk about your music and your art. So Blue Nation, tell us immediately, what is it? When did you guys start off? Uh, what is the music? What is the inspiration behind your music? Let's start with that. Luke. So... <laughs> Blue Nation. So Neil was Neil was in uh, in a band called Blue Nation uh, before I met him. Neil will be able to explain that much better than me. But from what I understand, we call Blue Nation because um, as a nation, we are very blue, meaning we're really sad, miserable. The UK. The UK. Yeah. yeah. The UK <laughs> is a miserable, miserable place. And you know we're trying to we're trying to lighten it up a bit, really. It's a sad it's a sad state of affairs, but you know we we try we try and spread a bit of love, peace, and a bit of light. Music is um, yeah. a great healer, and it makes everyone happy. Let's not talk about politics. We're here not to talk about that. Okay, Neil. So uh, you probably heard this before, and I'm sorry if I'm you know the person that says it again and again, but you sound. You probably know what I'm going to ask. You sound like Kurt Cobain. <laughs> oh, do you know what? No, we've not. I've not had Kurt Cobain before. No, no, no we've had. No, you're the first. You're the What is behind your music? How do you start writing something like this? First of all, I love Strangers. Um, it's something that really is so melodic. It is incredibly blue, as you would say. You know, you can just drift away yeah. listening to it. It's new, it's, it's alternative, it's, it's bluesy, it's jazzy, it's rocky. I mean, what is behind it? How do you start writing something like that? Well, we strangers actually came. We were doing pre-production with Trev in the studio, and we went in with with three songs, and uh, we needed a fourth, and we had like parts of songs. So how we write a song, Luke will come up with an idea and send it through, or I'll have a melody line or some chords, and we like to kind of write together. But every day after the studio, I'd kind of go home and, and listen to the ideas we'd put down over the like the last year and stuff and just trying to see if anything pieced together and nothing really came apart from this one riff which is the opening riff to strangers that luke wrote and i kind of sat down and we had a conversation during the day um which inspired it about i'm not going to say which band member but one of the band members in blue nation had a partner that wouldn't leave their house after a very short-lived relationship and uh, they said you know i'm going to stay here forever and that kind of got me thinking about the lyrics and how we've all at some stage in our life we've been in one of those relationships where you both know good for each other you both should separate ways but you kind of stay together but you do become strangers um, but yeah, it just kind of, we have ideas together. We bring, we come back together. We write as a band. We think, we think that's really important. Um, nobody's ideas are above anyone else's. Everyone puts their own input in and that's how we get the songs. And that's why we're a band, to be honest. Idlewise, Beatles, Kinks, Rolling Stones, Pink Floyd. Um, who else is the... All the old ones, isn't it? Yeah, I I absolutely adore Frank Zappa, Captain yeah. Beefheart. Um, oh, wow. We also I, I love Ravi Shankar. Lots yeah. of Indian kind of like, take inspiration from Indian stuff. Um, it's a massive list, huge list, but yeah, it's generally around the sixties, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah sixties yeah. to seventies, and yeah. you've kind of got it. How is it working with Trevor Gibson? You know, I'm asking this because Trevor is it's very terrible. Known. It's, 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 <laughs> yeah. it's an app. Yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't oh, turn up say that. when you know. Yeah, when you him, need him here, yeah, yeah, you, he, he, you tell him to turn up to places, and he just doesn't arrive. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, honestly, and we'll we'll say this when he's not here. The man's a genius. So yeah. I, I, we've known Trevor for years, 
And um, I sat down with him during the pandemic on our, before our last EP and said, look, I want to I wanna take the music and the production of the music to a next level. And me and Luke and, and Ollie were like, we've, we've got to step this up another notch and we have to work with a producer that isn't just going to say yes to us. He's going to actually put us through the ringer and really test us musically uh, and physically, to be honest, when you're in the studio. Mm. And Tra- Trev's words were, you are going to feel so tired after working with me in pre-production because... He, he's very, very subtle with how he works with you. He doesn't tell you the answer. He doesn't scream and shout. He's very, uh, hopefully we're describing the same Trevor that you know as well, very delicate. And he helps you get to the place, doesn't he, in the song that you need yeah. to get to without yeah. telling you. Um, yeah, he kind of, he doesn't, he, he kind of just plants little seeds and then you yeah. come around to the, the, you know, they come around to what he event really wanted originally, but yeah. it's, it's you that comes <laughs> back, yeah. Yeah, um, I suppose that's his experience as a negotiator, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. We we know yeah. Trevor. He's a, he's a very known face, especially in this region, and especially in Sarajevo. For everything, you probably know yeah. his story, and uh, you know, yeah. um, knowing that he's also working with such talent as you are is just. It's amazing. I watched Scream for Me Sarajevo, yeah. and when it's it was really beautiful. What what mm. they did. Um, and it, it just proves how important music is to all of yeah. us. Like just to see how how much it, putting on a gig at that time and how difficult it was, but they still brought music to people and how much it affected people. Like still still now to this day, with uh, like Trevor's told us some stories and stuff. And it is it really is just it proves how important music is to all of us. I I, I went on a, a journey while well, watching that, and I was actually with was Chris, the bass player. I was yeah, with yeah. Chris the other night actually in London. And I just sat down with him. It's the first time I'd met him. And I just thanked him. And he was like, look, you don't have to thank me. I just played bass. <laughs> it was just like, I just went along. I didn't really know what was happening. And I was like, yeah, but look what happened. And he went, yeah, I know. It's just, it, it's it's a beautiful thing. But it's music. That's the power of music, as Luke says. I mean, it's awesome to have a job like that when it's, you know, something that you love and you don't even consider it a job, knowing that it heals people, that it brings peace, yeah. that it brings, you know, it's, and you're right when you said that music uh, is, is, a, is a cinnamon for survival, for, you know, making it out there when it's the most difficult time. I, re- I read something about your album, The Captain Society. Uh, you've been writing it for three months only and performing yeah, for you. Yeah, yeah. It only took you three months to write it. How did you guys yeah, do yeah. that? We we kind of we we're always writing. Yeah. We, we, we never stop. Um, <laughs> yeah, and we we kind of we just never stop writing, and we always send ideas to each other, and um, all these parts or phrases that we have. I mean, sometimes some, sometimes I'll I'll have a whole song, and or Luke will have a whole song, or Ollie will come with a beat or something that that works or sometimes we have stuff that just sits there for years and then will come back to us as well Mm. but we never put any pressure on ourselves to right now we need to write a song this has to happen now it's all very organic very universal that it kind of gets sent to us doesn't it and you can't you can't force it any Mm. uh there's a there's um there was a very famous um, singer-songwriter that's been on a... He was in a documentary recently on a very famous streaming oh, right. network. <laughs> well done, by the way. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And you can literally see the record label forcing him to write songs yeah. that that were exactly the same as what he wanted, that were, that were hits previously. And, you know, um, he developed Tourette syndrome. Mm. It broke him mentally. Um, because of that pressure, you can't. You got. You got to let it happen. You know, it's. Um, you've got to let. You, you've got to let the song just kind of evolve and 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 get written ergonomically, really, how how it needs to sound, rather than force it. You can't force the song. Going back to working with Trev as well, I, I've never felt more comfortable, more relaxed to be creatively open in a studio yeah, than we yeah. are with Trev. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing's off the table, nothing. I mean, on, on the last EP, we recorded a clock ticking, right? I mean, it was, we went there and it was just, it's the most amazing experience when you're given that creative freedom to yeah. be exactly who you are and who you want to be. Uh, and everything, nothing's laughed at, nothing's ridiculed. I mean, on Strangers, 
the the bridge part when it breaks down we didn't have that at all so no, we, we went into the studio and trev was like i think we need something here so we all just sat in the control room and we just played with chords and we were trying things now that won't work i played half a chord luke went everybody stop and he went off and spent half an hour in the studio on his own just playing and just playing and then he kind of knocked on the glass and went right i'm ready um and he played us what he'd done and it was this amazing beautiful segue into and out of the riff and it just works but if we didn't give him that time and said oh come on we need to get going we need to do this we need to do that it wouldn't have happened so you you've got to give you've got to give people freedom you've got to give them the creative freedom Tell us about the gigs. You had a gig last week. Uh, how was that? How is it to perform, you know, with your own music that you wrote, that you play? And you guys are so young. I mean, I'm, I'm not old. It's <laughs> just filters. It's old. all filters. Yeah, yeah. No, it's all filters. It's all really good lighting. Yeah. <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> you know, when you're out there, how is it to perform for the audience? What kind of kick do you get out of it? You know, I'm interested in, in, in that portion it's, it's the best feeling in the world ever yeah. um the biggest buzz of I, i have ever got is having people oh, yeah. in a crowd singing your own lyrics back to you um and it, yeah it's just overwhelming it's, yeah uh, that's just started happening as well yeah. over the past probably kind of year or so that in certain songs they they sing and, and really sing the words back to us and um it hits you like a tornado when you're on stage. The amount of times Luke and I have like looked at each other on stage and nearly burst out crying because it's so emotional that this thing that you've cared for and, and written and, and spent money on and put your heart and soul into that someone else feels that way too. So much so that when they pay to come see you, that's still weird as well, by the way, they pay to come see you and then they sing it back to you with all that passion and all that love. It just, you feel it hit you. Um, and it's, as Luke said, it's a, it's a beautiful thing, but it's, there's nothing like it. I, I honestly, if we could bottle the feeling of being on stage for everyone and let people try it, it would be world peace because yeah, it yeah, is, it be, yeah. it's unreal. It's yeah. the greatest feeling. Oh, I wish I had a talent, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a talent? Where do you want to go with all this? And um, you know, where it's a, I know it's a stupid question when you go like, oh, where do you see yourself in five years? But really, where do you see yourself in five years? You, you, usually, people you know don't think about it. It says they say it's you know five years is such a you know short period of time but it's it's really not i mean if you if you wrote an album in three months and perfected it in a year and you're already doing these gigs and you guys are so amazing i mean i think five years is a a, a, a lot you know a, hu a huge span to achieve more that you want to do what, what do you want to do next we we have we have a list of things that we want to tick off yeah. um play Wembley Stadium, go on Jules Holland, support the Foo Fighters, play Glastonbury. Luke and I refuse to go to Glastonbury until we're playing it, right? So these, there's these, these kind of milestones that every band has. Um, so they're, they're definitely kind of the key ones. Yeah. Um, I met Luke five years ago uh, and kind of that's when Blue Nation really kind of came together and, and focused its, its power and journey on where we were going. To be honest, I have no idea where we're going journey-wise, but we are loving every second of yeah, it. We're just gonna we're gonna ride it out, see where it takes us. Yeah, we want we want to go where it takes us because I think yes, obviously we want to be playing stadiums, we want to be playing everything, but I think, yeah. and I've been guilty of this in the past, is when when you dream of the stadium, you miss the amazing connection yeah, with the 300 yeah. people that's in the venue you've got there and then don't you yeah we um we you know every gig that we play at we we're, we're both champions of, of mental health mm. and we promote guys looking after their mental health um there's some horrible statistics statistics in the uk at the moment about men and suicide rates and yeah. stuff like that so before we play a song called echoes which is about grief we talk about 
mental health within men and how we need to look out after each other, how we need to speak speak up and it's okay to not be okay. Um, so honestly, I don't care what amount of people we're playing to as long as we can get to someone and help them. Yeah. Um, as long as we're helping people, then it's our job done. And, you know, it's really easy to stand on stage and kind of, you know, just, just go on and waffle on about loads of different stuff. But this, it's a real, real important issue, I think, at the moment. And yeah. if we do help wow. one person, that's our job done. I love when you say it's okay not to be okay, you know? And uh, even yeah, though yeah. It, it, if it's, you know, it's still taboo in, in most countries, like, like in my country, yeah. it's kind of taboo. <laughs> you know, yeah, you, it's yeah. not okay to be not okay. You know, it's it's hard to talk yeah, it about is. it. And you know, a lot of things are have been happening in the past couple of months, past couple of weeks. I mean, we had a first school shooting in Belgrade, and yeah. then you know, just afterwards, we are realizing that while we were busy with you know things from the '90s, we kind of overlooked what our children were going through, and. Um, Yep. Yeah. And finally, we start thinking, okay, it's okay not to be okay. And it's even more okay to talk about it. And, you know, the best way to talk about it is through music, too. Um, I love that you have that component in, in your work. I mean, it's really it just, important. It, it transcends music music transcends everything and yeah. the way the way we look at it if if three lads from Birmingham in the UK can sit on stage or stand on stage and talk about all the things that they go through themselves then maybe that will help someone think oh I'm going through that I need to talk about it as well I got a message uh, on one of our social media platforms recently that, that said that my son saw you play live. The guy didn't see us. He came and spoke to us saying he was struggling and the reason he did that was because he said it was okay to talk because Blue Nation said it was okay to, do, to talk. Now that for us is, is mission accomplished, right? Because we got a young 21 year old lad to talk to his parents. These parents had no idea who we were and just messaged saying thank you. And we were like, it's so wow. it's yeah. a very important position being on stage and it's not lost on us and we'd be nowhere without the people that support us. I don't need us to wind up, give us some time for the coming. I don't need us to get it, is it cruel or so let go? Can I take you back easy? Can I take you back easy? There you go. Thank you. you produced, recorded, and mixed Circle Studios where you are right now. We had the opportunity, we have the opportunity to know these guys, these talented young men that are bringing something so fresh, but also a little bit something that we already know, you know, the good feelings from the 60s, the 70s. I mean, how was it working with these guys? Oh, these guys are just fabulous. They're honestly, they are, they are the nicest, most thoughtful, most fun guys uh, um, that you could even imagine. And they're they're so talented. It's just quite incredible. I'm, I'm sure you, you you know all about them already. But uh, but yeah, they they are they are just they're superstars in the making. Honestly. And uh, well, when you say they are superstars in the making, I mean, you know, you know when you know. When you look at people, when you listen to them, you know they are superstars and making it such a great thing that we have, you know, a piece of that pie. So we, we actually had um, when we did the the current, well, the forthcoming EP, uh, um, they brought about seven songs to me, and we needed four four singles out of that, uh, um, and uh, and fundamentally they didn't have four singles in the seven songs. I thought three of the songs were good, very, very good. Uh, and the other four just weren't good enough. We, we, we made a pledge to ourselves. Last year we did uh, uh, three singles and then the fourth one was an EP. And we pledged to ourselves that this this time we would, we would raise the bar, we would pick up the game and we would only uh, release songs that were better 
at least as good or better than the last four. And and it turned out uh, that was a really high bar because uh, um, their song Echoes in particular uh, um, really did incredibly well and, and got radio play across the world, which for a relatively small unsigned band from, from Birmingham, England, was, was pretty incredible. Uh, um, so we decided that we needed to, to raise the bar this time. So of the seven songs they brought to me, uh, I thought three of them were, were really very good indeed. Uh, and uh, and, and uh, hopefully you'll see that uh, with the next single that's coming along. And and but we did. There was no fourth song, uh, and literally we spent uh, quite a lot of time in the studio trying to turn one of those three other songs that they brought into a fourth song, which was capable of being a hit. And 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 ultimately, I said, "This isn't good enough, guys. We, we don't have a fourth song." And um uh, and they we played quite late into the night with some with some um, sounds. And at the end of the evening, Neil went home and uh, and it was really obvious that there was no way he was going to sleep until he had a fourth song for us. And, and pretty much he stayed up all night and wrote a fourth song pretty much from scratch. He'd gone away with, uh, I think, a riff that Luke came up with in the studio. Uh, and he wrote a fourth song from scratch overnight. And we spent the following day really taking his the song ideas that he brought back to us and, and turning them into a song. And that song is actually Strangers, which was released, which was released two weeks ago and is doing really very well indeed. So, so yeah. Unbelievable. Uh, uh, so yeah, so it's much I, more of a challenge. It's, yeah. a challenge. It's, it's always a challenge to, to tell a young band that their songs aren't good enough because you, because, you you don't you can't crush them. You don't want to crush them, uh, uh, um, uh, so you need to tell them in such a way that actually they're motivated to do better, rather than just say, "Oh God, it's not good enough. What are we going to do now?" So 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 that was the challenge for me, uh, um, leading them to the point without tell saying, "Sorry guys, that's rubbish." I, I wanted to lead them to the point that they understood it just wasn't good enough. Uh, 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 um, and that's really my approach to this stuff. I, I, I try and lead them to the point that they understand, without having to crush their uh, to crush their creativity. And they told us exactly that that it was tough at times, but that they really appreciated your leadership. And uh, you're right. You know, egos can really fly sometimes, especially when it comes to younger uh, performers, younger talent. But they seem so down to earth. Uh, what was the, f the the most fun part working with these guys? Well, I, I mean, first of all, they're, they're fabulously down to earth. I, yeah. I, I, you probably picked this up, but Ollie, their drummer, is actually Robert Plant's drummer. Uh, uh, um, he, so he also plays for Robert Plant in his day job. Uh, uh, um, so he he does these massive stadium tours with Robert Plant, and in between, uh, uh, he and Blue Nation go out. And this year, so so the plan last year was to to pick up their game so that they were getting booked for festivals this year. And it's absolutely worked. So so this year they have wall-to-wall -wall festivals. All summer long they're playing festivals. They're going on tour uh, to Europe with Lawrence Jones. Uh, uh, um, so, so it's really worked. But but so, so Ollie goes from really stadium tours with Robert Plant to, to smaller festivals. They've picked up some bigger festivals this year smaller gigs with Blue Nation. Uh, um, so that, that's a really, uh, a really interesting dynamic. What's the most fun part, though? The, the, the relationship these guys have is just astonishing. So I've got a fantastic, I should send you the footage, but I've got a fantastic piece of footage where we've been working on one song uh, and and I, and I was working them quite hard because I thought they could do better. And uh, and at the point that I said, okay, that's a take, uh, um, Luke, uh, uh, Luke threw his bass down and Ollie jumped out of his drums and they ran across the studio, studio and started hugging each other. And then Ollie picked Luke up and they were dancing around the studio. <laughs> it was just absolutely fantastic. How does that process start when you decide that you will work with a band like Blue Nation. How does it start? You guys sit down, you talk about what you want to achieve. How does the creative process start? Where does it begin? 
So the process starts for me in meeting the band because, frankly, I don't I don't accept work from all of the bands that come to me. I, um, I really only I'm willing to accept work from bands who I think are really willing to work in the way that I think they need to. Uh, uh, um, and, and for us, Neil and I, uh, um, I, I'd known these guys for a while because they did their last record, uh, the Kaftan Society, uh, um, in Studio B, in my studio complex. So I'm, I have, uh, there's five studios here, uh, um, and they they worked in Studio B with another engineer. So I, I met them then. But then during, um, during the first COVID lockdown, Neil reached out to me and said, look, we, we really want, we want to take our music to the next level. We need to, we've been working really hard on this, but we don't feel like we're achieving and we want to take things to the next level. So um, so Neil and I sat down for a coffee after the first lockdown um, in, a, in a socially distanced uh, way. Uh, um, and, uh, and and we talked about that. And I said, look, well, if you want to work with me, I'm, I'm going to make you work harder than you've ever worked before. Uh, uh, um, if I don't think your music's good enough, I'm going to tell you your music's not good enough. Uh, and, and, and nothing leaves this studio unless we think it is worthy of of uh, prime time commercial radio play uh, uh, um, and, and that was the start of the process I wanted to change their perception about I didn't want them to think they were just going to walk in the studio I was going to press record and then they would walk away with a record because that's really not the way that I operate uh, um, I, I, I have a methodology whereby I get them to look at their own music through an entirely different lens, through the lens of a listener. And I get them to do a number of exercises with their music uh, um, uh, um, to try and decide for themselves whether it's good enough, whether whether it would maintain their attention for the three and a half minutes that it plays for. Uh, uh, um, uh, and from there, uh, um, they come in and demo the songs and uh, and as I say, I, I take them through a number of exercises. We listen to the songs which which they say are their favourite songs, which are the best songs of all time. And we analyse those using the same tools uh, and try and work out what it is that's so good about them. And conversely, what what's weak about a song. Uh, um, and uh, and we play all of those tools into into the songs that we work on and hopefully out of the other end of the pre-production process we end up with a song which is which is really capable of not only being a hit but holding people's attention mm -hmm. uh, uh, so uh yeah and then uh, of course after that process i send them away and i get them to practice them i, I get them to work on their parts i get them to to work on their vocals on on everything so that when they come back to the studio to record that actually they they should be playing like a like a you know a, any major band in the country is playing, uh, uh, um, so that so that the recording process is then actually relatively easy because all of the hard work has been done before they come to the studio. I asked this uh, the the boys Neil and Luke. I asked them, okay, uh, it, it's going good. Where are you in five years? In ten years? You know, because that's a taking in consideration how much they already achieved in such a short time. You know, where do you see yourself? Where do where do you see Blue Nation in that period of time? Uh, honestly, the 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 acceleration at which these guys are going at the moment, I, I can see them. I can see them playing Glastonbury, being 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 one of the bigger bands that are touring at the moment because their their talent, yeah. their yes. hunger, their their work ethic. It is really unsurpassed, really unsurpassed. So if I compare them to, uh, um, so another band that I've worked with is uh, uh, an English pop band called Bastille, yeah. who um, who are doing very well at the moment. Uh, and 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 Bastille, I, I, exactly the same uh, things. Their their talent, their work ethic, their hunger. Their their they just want everything to be better, and they focus on how do we do this better all of the time and, and I see exactly those traits in, in Blue Nation. Amazing. I love hearing that. 
I love it. All right, uh, one last question, and I promised Neil that I would ask. Um, explain porridge. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> that, I had to ask, I promised. <laughs> that that is a discussion. <laughs> What's that is a discussion. That is a discussion that we can only have in Jasbina uh, 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 um, <laughs> at the very end of an evening. Uh oh. <laughs> All right. You promise. You promise. I promise that. All right. I'll, I'll hold you to it. I know you. You keep your promises. I know that. Uh, Trevor, thank you so much for sharing uh, these beautiful stories and methodology that's behind your work with Blue Nation. Uh, we are so excited to see these guys take off. They already have such an amazing, talented band, amazing, talented young men. It's just so inspiring. Thank you for being with us. My absolute pleasure. Thank you for having me. See you in Sarajevo.